<laughs> you you hit it right on the mark. And I, I tell you, if you just turn in, we are uh, with Pastor Charles Lindsay in uh, Chillicothe, Ohio. He's got a great church there, Landmark uh, Christian Center, and uh, he's a part of a great ministry as well, traveling ministry, uh, Freedom Ministries. If uh, you guys want him to come out, his team of people to come out, uh, please contact them. Uh, and we got some great more questions coming up here. Great interview so far. You can go onto the website, freedom-ministries.org. That's freedom-ministries.org. We'll make sure to post that on the site as well, so you guys can just click on that very easily. Contact them, get a hold of them. And if you're in the area, come and see them right there in uh, the Landmark uh, Christian Church. And I'm sure that uh, if you're getting anything from this uh, interview, you'll get even more when you're there on scene. Uh, with Pastor Lindsay and his and his team of people there, so let's talk about uh, that the church there. What's been some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, um, that's really you know been something where you guys had to dig deep for and overcome. Yeah, um, at the very beginning um, when we came here, uh, I think I might have talked a little bit about this at the beginning. Um, is the fact that when we came to Landmark, we had to rebuild the foundation. It was a part of a denomination. Um, God didn't lead me into a denomination, back into one. I left about uh, four or five years ago, a major, excuse me, a denomination. So my wife and I knew that that wasn't our heart, wasn't where God was leading us back. And so for God to bring us here, that was just a miracle in itself. He worked everything out himself. And so when I met with the um, the leadership of, uh, of Landmark, I told them, number one, I'm not a pastor. Um, I'm not. I'm more apostolic. I, I'm not. Uh, it's not about a title for me. It's not about a title of pastor, um, a title of uh, apostle, prophet. It's never about that. It's about how you walk in it. What is your gifting that you walk in? But we knew that God led us to landmark. And the very first thing that we felt like we needed to do, God spoke to my heart, was just like in the Old Testament, they had to rebuild the foundation. When they went back to rebuild, <laughs> excuse me, the temple. They had to start with the foundation, and that's what God challenged me to do, that it was time to rebuild the foundation. Uh, this church had been stagnant, no growth, a lot of hurt, a lot of pastors going in and out, in and out, coming and leaving, coming and leaving. And the Lord spoke to me and said, that's got to stop right here. Um, the foundation was crumbling spiritually, um, and so we had to rebuild that. So uh, normally as a new pastor... Coming in, you want to outreach, you want to knock on doors, you want to do whatever you can to grow. And God said, no, before there can be growth, the foundation has to be redone. And we did that, and I said, Lord, what's the foundation? He said, the fivefold ministry. Uh, I believe in most of our churches today, we are, we are malnourished uh, because we're getting fed by only one type of gifting, whether it's more evangelistic or it's the pastor or a teacher. But we're not utilizing the apostle. We're not utilizing the prophet, the evangelist. It's the team of people. I don't think that, I think every church ought to have the fivefold ministry uh, operating somehow in that church. Um, because I don't have to preach every Sunday. I don't want to preach every Sunday. That's a burden to me. Uh, I, do I love to preach? Yes. Do I love to minister to people? Yes, I do. But the people get tired of, of hearing me preach the same week, the same way, sermon after sermon. I don't care how good it is. Uh, so I think that's why Jesus gave us the five prophetic. They need that for their equipping. They need the apostolic. They need the teaching. We need all of it. So that was the foundation. I said, we're going to do this. And so I, I didn't have it in our church. So I started bringing in quality ministers who operate in those giftings. And you know what? The very people that I thought would reject it were the very ones that were hungry for it. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, Charlie, my people here have been malnourished, and I'm going to nourish them now. And so we are seeing that. And it took about six months where God would not allow me to uh, outreach. He would not allow me to knock on doors. And we built the foundation. And uh, starting in January, we was we still hit about 17, 20 people, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. But all of a sudden, in January, the Lord spoke to me and said, the foundation's done. It's time to build structure. And that structure, that structure is starting to release those people in your church. Um, you know, I think the people in the church, we put too much pressure on the pastor. He's got to do it all. And we look, we pay him to do this. We expect him to do this. Uh, you know what? I don't think the pastor needs to go out and visit the people in the hospital. 
Uh, our job is to equip people for their ministry. And we got to get back to that. And I think once we realize that, our churches, again, we're going to equip people and they will go out and minister. And we're doing that. And now our attendance is just escalating. Um, it's phenomenal. And now the Lord has released us to go out. We're ministering in Walmarts. We're ministering in Kroger's. We're ministering out on the streets. And the difference is, is that we're not inviting people to church because just look at America. Everybody knocks on doors and we're still only reaching 20% of America. It's not time to invite people to church. It's time to be the church and go out. Wow. And so the idea, the ideas of us growing our church on Sunday mornings is, is such a facade. It's such a false idea when really our excuse is, well, come to church, come to church and come and get saved and come and get healed. Those days got to be done. Those days has got to stop. The days where our people are going out and they're saying, hey, look, let me give you a word of the Lord. Let me share with you the love of God. And you win them to Jesus. And guess what? When they experience the freedom that, that Jesus has for them, they're going to come and be a part of the church body. And that's where it happens. And that's New Testament. And that's revolutionary. And that's our heart. That's the heart of Freedom Ministries is, we got to ignite a revolution in America. Uh, we're only reaching uh, out of three over 300 million people in America. We're only reaching about 60 million people. Friend, the harvest is out there now. Now, now, now. And it's time for a revolution. And that's our heart. And that's what we're doing. And that's incredible, Pastor. And and so you guys really have uh, you guys have a heart for New Testament ministry, and, and that's uh, that's something that the church so desperately needs. And.